Well, a lot of people get saved late in life for what they miss. Take your Bibles tonight. Please turn to the book of Ruth. Ruth. Joshua, Judges, Ruth. You need a little help? Amen. First thing we go left. Now, Ruth is one of those little books that's tucked away. It's kind of like Amos or Joel or, you know, the back of the whatever we talk about very much. I don't know how much you're familiar with the book of Ruth. Uh, Lord willing, one day... Uh, I'd like to go through the book of Ruth, maybe on a Sunday night or even a Sunday school. Tremendous truths in there. But I want to bring a message tonight on the awesome power of choice. Going out full and coming home empty. Uh, staying in the will of God. The consequences of getting out of the Lord's will. There's a lot of uh, different titles we could give this tonight. But I want to share some thoughts with you tonight about a family. And we want to look at this tonight because... Uh, this family is so illustrative of what happens when we get away from the Lord, we get out of God's will, we tend to uh, try to work out a situation within our own way, and uh, this, this turns into backsliding, and backsliding, we, we, we tend to, it robs us of our joy, our happiness, our desire to walk with God. Uh, if you're here tonight and you're, you're in a backsliding condition, uh, you don't have a desire to read the Word of God. You say, well, you know, uh, uh, you, if you have a desire to read the Word of God, that's a tremendous asset. But in Ruth chapter 1, I'm going to read through a couple of verses and just kind of jump around, skip around. But I want you to see where uh, backsliding, this, this getting out of the Lord's will, begins tonight. The Bible says, and it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. By the way, let's just, let's just, if you want to, just drop across the page. Let me start Judges 21 25. This kind of gives you an idea of, of the of the society, and it probably uh, probably says a little bit about where we are in America. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Well, that's, that's us tonight. That's our country. Then it says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man named Be- uh, Lim- or, excuse me, a certain man of Bethlehem, Judea went out to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Now, the Bible says here in verse number two that his name was Elimelech. Elimelech means my God is king. It's amazing. Bible names have a lot of meanings. And when you're reading your Bible, uh, if you have a a Strong's Concordance, a Bible dictionary, look look at these names. Don't just read over the names. Well, that's nice. That's a nice name. That's a strange name. I can't pronounce that name. I'm not going to go there. Uh, yeah, that's an easy one to pronounce. A lot of times it's easy to read our Bibles and say, well, that was a nice name. But these names have a lot of meaning. Here, here's a man named Elimelech. His name, my, my God, is King. And the name of his wife was Naomi, which basically means delightful. I notice this. And the name of his two sons was Malon and Chilion, which basically means Naomi, sickly, and Chilion means piney. Uh, that's kind of a strange two names in a, in a sense. Ephrodites of Bethlehem, Judea, which that word speaks of a city of bread, which is interesting because the Bible says there was a famine there. And this man decides, you know what, uh, there's a, we're having a famine in the land, we're going to go down, we're going we're to leave the country here, and we're going to go to a place called Moab. Now notice that. Uh, Moab, I believe, speaks of a type of, of a carnality, and it speaks of a lot of times where people tend to go when they're running from God. We, we see Jonah. Jonah, God said, Jonah, you go to Nineveh. God, Jonah said, I don't think I'm going to do that. Those people there are not too nice, and they're sure not nice to preachers. They're not nice to people like me. So he started running. The Bible says he went down on the ship, and he just kept going down. We know that story. But I want you to call your attention here. The Bible says in verse 3, and I want you to understand something tonight. That God uh, gives us this, this story, I believe, for a real reason. Satan fights the family. We understand that. I'm going to tell you what. He's doing an incredibly good job in America tonight. The family is under attack. Uh, I saw a statistic just the other day. We were talking about the uh, statistics, and we'll bring this out in a couple weeks when we go through our, our uh, lessons on Sunday school, uh, the purpose of the Sunday school, and some of the things that we want to deal with in our Sunday school, the percentage of people that are out of uh, Sunday school in America. And you probably you probably can get the number. It's incredible. There's very few people, uh, you know, in Sunday school. They, they, you, know, that's, you know, that's just another hour I can sleep in. The teacher's bored. Hey, I guarantee if you was in the adult class this morning, you didn't sleep. Man, brother, the captain, he was... He was just on top of his game this morning, brother. He, he, I meant to tell you, it, it, was, it was just a blessing. It was just a blessing. My wife was, kept commenting on him today. And I said, that's, 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 that's what we need. 
as adults. And I know you know people in the back, and you get a lot of things. If you're in Ken's class, you probably are getting something from a Jewish perspective. Maybe you understand some of that. Some of that I don't always understand. He's, he's you know he brings stuff out all the time. And, I'm thinking, okay, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, I, I've got to know that. I, I just go on because sometimes it's just you know, it's way up over my head. But I, I enjoy hearing that. that that's, that's a blessing. But that's what the Bible says. Here's a family, and they have a famine. And instead of staying there, trusting God, the dad said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move up. We're going to go get the U-Haul, and we're mowing the Moab. Now, your Bible doesn't say that, by the way. But that, that's just Will's parable. Actually, that's what he did. He, he goes gets the rider truck of the U-Haul, and he packs everybody up. He, he grabs his family, and they go down to Moab. And the Bible says in verse 3, And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, dies. So they move to this place where they probably shouldn't have been to start with. And then Elimelech, this, this husband, dies. Wow. And she was left with her two sons. So she gets, they get to this, out of the country, a foreign country, so to speak, and then I want you to see that there, there was a funeral there. Think about that a minute. There's a funeral. Her husband dies. Then the Bible says in verse 4, and they took them wives of the women of Moab. So here was not only them leaving the land out of God's will, now you've got a funeral out of God's will. Now you've got two marriages Probably out of God's will. Notice that. They took them two wives. The name of the one was Orpha, and the other name was Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. I want you to understand this. The Bible says it's a family there in verse 1. They went to sojourn. They wasn't planning on staying in Moab for just a little bit of time. And folks, tonight, I promise you, when you get away from the will of God, you are not planning to stay there very long. I'll, I'll get back into it. I've had people in Burger You probably know what I'm talking about. I've had people tell, oh, I'll be there Sunday for you. I'll be there. Well, I'm still looking for them. And that's been years and years ago. I know. I, I, I'm going to get back in church. I need to get, and I'll, I'll say something like, you know what? You, you need to get your family in church, brother. You need to get your wife there. You need to get your kids in church. You need, you need, oh, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there one day. Well, you will. You will. Now you may be in a, you know, you'll come to church one day, I promise you. Everybody will. You come, you may come in horizontal, but you will come in a chapel. You'll come in a church. Or you'll come in a mortuary chapel. You will come in, but unfortunately, we see all these things going on. All of a sudden we have this funeral. We have these marriages. And all of a sudden the Bible says in verse 5, and Malon and Chilion dies. Wow. So they go to a far country. There's a funeral there for the husband, and the next thing you know, the two boys get married, and then it seems like just, just all, pretty quick, the two boys die. So now you've got the mom, and you got two daughters-in-law. They're in a far country, so now you've got two more funerals in a far country. Now you talk about a mess. You talk about a family that should have stayed where God wanted them to stay. You say, well, hey, there was family. Yes, there was family there, but the Bible says this man said, I'm going to Moab. I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm not going to go to Moab. And he dies. The two sons die. Now we got three people left over. And this is kind of where the story uh, starts going. And the Bible talks about how the, the, the country of Moab had the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. And because so Naomi decides, you know what? It's time for it's time for us to go back home. And she tells her two dogs, I said, look, look, I'm old and you know, really, why, why don't why don't you two people, why don't you two lovely girls go back to your parents, go back to your people, and then I am gonna go back to Israel and all these things are going on and, and you'll you do all these things, of course, uh, we, we know the story how they offer us so you know she takes off, but the Bible says in verse 14 that Ruth played to her. Notice that Behold, thy sister in law has gone back into her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister in law. And Ruth said, verse 16, we, we, we hear this in a lot of uh, weddings, what a tremendous verse. A wonderful decision, by the way, what Ruth said. Entreat me not to leave thee, nor return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Well, I like that. In other words, now she, she, so, she has seen these things. She has seen all this death. She's seen all these things. But there was something about Naomi's God that attracted Ruth. That's amazing to me. Here, here's a, a young girl growing up in a heathen country. And the Bible says in verse 7, Where you die, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord so do to me, and more also, if thou death, 
Part of thee and me. And the Bible says the name will re re recognize it. Well, okay, Ruth, she tried to encourage her going, but you know, Ruth said, no, I'm going to do it. Wherever you go, I'm going to go. In other words, wherever you go, Naomi, I'm going to be like you. Like, why don't you get say that? Wherever you go, I'm going to follow you. Where you die, I'm going to die. Your God's going to be my God. And you're not getting rid of me that easy. Praise God for that. Hey, by the way, look what it says in verse 19. So they two went till they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they would come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved. Well, that's important. You know what? Who is watching you during a trial? You ever, notice that? you ever thought about that? Who is watching you when you're going through a trial, when you're on the mountaintop, when you're in the valley, when you're excited about the things of God, when you get discouraged? Who is watching you? I guarantee it's more than people than you think. Right. You know, you've heard the, you've heard the little uh, expression that your sermon's a uh, sermon. Be careful what you preach. Well, that's so true. You know, we have to be careful. The Bible says all of the city was moved, and they said, "Wow." Is, is this Naomi? Uh, and all these people coming out there, probably a lot of the women, all these women coming out, they said in verse, call me not Naomi, call me Mar. For the Almighty, the word there is the providing, well, I think that's significant, the providing one, hath dwelt very bitterly in me. And this is the verse I want to deal with tonight. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me, so Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess and her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. The Bible says in verse 1 that Elimelech went to stay down there. He was just going to stay there a little while. Then you can go down to verse 2 and the Bible says they continued there. You see that? And then I want you to look at verse 4. Back in verse 4. And they took them wives of the women of Moab and the name of one was Orpha. In the name of the other Ruth, and they dwelt there about 10 days. Is that what it says? 10 years. 10 years. So they started out to sojourn there. The Bible said they continued there, and now they've been there 10 years. You know what? When you get out of the will of God, folks, yes, you can get back in God's will, but you know what? It's tough. When a train derails, it's tough. I mean, you just don't, you just don't jump back on a truck. And the Bible's very clear here. Now, all these things were going on and 10 years had passed. You know what? We get away from God. We get away from reading the Word of God. We, we get where well, we don't think we get unfaithful to church. Guess what happens? Pretty soon we start missing Sunday night. The next thing we know, we're missing midweek service. The next thing we know, we quit reading our Bible. The next thing we know, we quit praying. And just like that song we sang a while ago, it talks about uh, set my heart of fire, our passion starts dying. Make the flame, flame gets going. I never forget this an individual many years ago. I had a big fireplace. I never forget that. And I was sitting there, I was encouraging this individual to come to church, get back in the house of God, and a big old coal fell off that log and, and fell away from the heart. I almost fell out in the floor and fell right there. And we talked for a while, and I said, You know what? That's you. That's you, sir. As long as you if you get close to that fire, man, that's going to be good. But you, you start rolling away from that fire, guess what? Pretty soon that coal is going to go cold. It's going to go blue gray. It's going to get dead as a hammer. No no use in anything. You know what? How many people like that? We These people, they, they didn't plan on staying in my way of long. Oh, well, we just go down until the harvest comes in, and then we'll shoot back in here. Next year. Next year, 10 years, the Bible says they stayed in Moab for 10 years. Notice that. We we don't, see, we don't plan on staying in sin long. Nobody plans to stay in sin long. Let me tell you something. When a person starts getting ready to, to, to drink or smoke or cigarette or whatever, they don't intend on doing that very long. I'll just do it for a little while. No, the Bible says here for 10 years. They, they, I, I think about these, these, uh, these two, these two uh, wives here. They saw this. They, I, don't, I don't know if they, they, they saw eliminate before he died, but you know, they, they two husbands died. They saw death. They saw all these things. And then the Bible says in verse 6 that the Lord had visited his people. Now let me encourage you about something here. The Bible says in verse number 22 of chapter 1, So Naomi returns, her and Ruth, the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem, I want you to understand this, in the beginning of barley harvest. See, everything in the Word of God has a, has a reason. That, 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 was the, that, was, that was a time of feasting. 
In other words, the barley harvest, when the, when the harvest time was coming in, there was great joy. I mean, I'm, hey, look at the field. It's time to go harvest the crop. And then now, now they're back in God's will. Now they're back in a place of blessing. And folks, can I say tonight, nobody intends to get out of the will of God. Nobody intends to, to backslide. Nobody intends to do that. Uh, you, you, ever, you ever tried to climb up an old hill? Brother Jimmy knows that one time. I grew up in South Georgia. Man, there's some of the best red clay down South Georgia. You'll find it. Now, there's some good clay up here in South Carolina, too. Don't get me wrong. There's some of them down. But you know, sometimes you get on a hill and you're trying to climb a hill when it's, when it's wet and muddy. Man, I don't care what kind of boots you got. It ain't going to happen. I know Kenneth, years ago, we was in the Weed Blows Cub Scouts. We went up to Kiwi, camped out there. Our father, son, camp out. Done seen the radar. I said, oh, son, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Let's, let's, let's wait. Why not? Let's go down. Let's just go. Said, oh, okay, we're going to go. They, you know, Boy Scout, they don't cancel nothing. Man, it'd be a hurricane. They, well, they might have canceled this week. I don't know. They, they probably wouldn't have done it anyway. And we get up there and we hike into this place and put everything in canoes. And the next morning, some, some lucky guy, he gets to paddle the canoes and he goes back to the land. And we're we going to hike out of this place. We're down on this island, this peninsula, really. And I'll tell you what, going out of there, of course, it rained that night. Oh, man, did it ever rain? Man, did it rain. I'll tell you what, I, I probably just had tennis shoes on. And, man, we had to go to this big, because they were big old, you remember that big old steep hill? I mean, man, man, man you're just grabbing on top of trees, just hoping you can get up to the top of where we are. Well, we, we made it. Thank the Lord I'm here tonight. But I, I didn't think we was going to make it. I'll be honest with you. The slipper there. That's exactly the way it is when a child of God gets out of, of the will of God. You know what? It starts going backwards. You've been in a vehicle and you get stuck. Some of you need to go mud and four way long. You know what I'm talking about. You go in a hole, or maybe you're just going down your driveway. Here later, you're probably going down your driveway and the tire's spinning. What happens? You don't like traction. Hey, Christian, we got to get some traction. Hey, oh, I tell you what, the old devil, he, he's got plenty of traction. He's got plenty of the rubber on his tire. But you know, Christian, we, we, we spin a little bit. Well, you know, I, 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 I think I'll just sleep in there. I, I don't think I'm going to read my Bible today. You know, I'm kind of tired. My, I got a headache. No, that's where it happens. We start compromising, and Elimelech said, I, "Hey, I hear they got bread. Let's go to Moab." And he pulls his family up, and he moves them down there. And the next thing you know, he dies. Next thing you know, his two sons married. They die. So you have all these funerals, all these weddings in a far country. And the next thing you know, the mom is there with his daughter-in-law, and they don't know what to do. And the mom says, "I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm going back. I'm going back to bed. I'm going back to a place of feasting." Now, don't you see something here? Look at verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let us now go into. Isn't that amazing? This girl said, Hey, you know what? Uh, she wasn't lazy. Pray God. Uh, you know what? Hey, it's, 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 a, it's harvest time. Let, let's go do it. Now, Boaz here is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word there means in him street. I'm not going to go through the whole book of Ruth tonight because there's just so many beautiful pictures of, of that. But I want you to understand this. They're back in the middle of God's will. They're in a place of blessing. But going out full. This woman said, I went out full, verse 31, 21. I went out full. I had my husband. I had my two sons. And now I've come back. Yeah, she had a daughter-in-law. And she did have a daughter in it. And obviously Ruth was an unbelievable individual person that obviously had some character about her. She loved the God that Naomi served. But Ruth, Naomi said, I went out. I had my husband. I had my son. I went out full. I had a, a family. And the Lord had brought me again empty. I wonder if you're here tonight and you're empty. No, not that you have an empty pocketbook or wallet or a bank account. Or I'm talking about you're empty. You're searching for something. You, you know what you ought to be doing. <laughs> But yet, it's so hard to do that. Man, you know, Paul said, you know, the things I ought to do, I don't do. The things I don't do, I do. That's just human nature, folks. That's just us. You know, I've said many, many times, we, uh, me and Diane went to that uh, Hey Good Meal a couple weeks ago, and they had kind of an arts and crafts festival and some uh, music up there, and they had an old 1935 uh, Dodge truck sitting up there, and they had an old hog sitting in a little cage on the back. And I thought, you know, what, what, what ain't he entertaining? Everybody wanted to walk by like they never seen a pig, you know. And I got to think, you know what? If they took that pig, and they took him out there, and they gave him a good old bath, and they sprayed some Chanel number five, or whatever you wouldn't wear, or whatever, and they, they, and they put a bowl around, and you turn him loose, what's he going to do? 
You know what he's going to do? He go, here later, he can go find a mirror, mud hole he can find, and he's laying in that mud hole. Oh, I ain't I in heaven. You know why? Because that's his nature. Folks, that's what we are. If, if you ever said to me, we can clean up on the outside, but unfortunately, this, 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 uh, this awesome power of choice. If you will, I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. I'm going to share a couple of verses with you tonight about some consequences of this backsliding. Well, I'll tell you what. We've all been there. We've all been in that place where we've drifted away from God. We, 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 we need to come back tonight. Thank you, God, for that. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promises to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Now, what's he saying there? You know, basically he's saying this. You know what? God, God promised Abraham certain things. And you know, when you, when you think about Abraham, you remember Abraham? Abraham said, uh, God came to Abraham one day and said, Hey, Abraham, uh, you, need to go get, you, you need to go get you a U-Haul truck. And load them up. You're getting out of here. And all the neighbors said, Hey, Abraham, where are you going? Right Abraham. Well, I don't really know where we're moving to. The Lord told me to move. Wait a minute. You, you mean you're going you're gonna to pack your family up? You don't know where you're moving. You're, you're going to help your neighbor. They're moving. You haul truck and say, hey, Kevin, where are you guys moving to? Well, we, we don't know. You mean you're loading up the truck and you're, 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 gonna get, you're leaving your job and you're going to leave this area and, and you, you don't know where you're going? That's right. That's basically what Abram said. Because God said, you, you need to get out of here. And I'll show you where to go. And God, there was a time where the Bible says God took him up and he said, you know what? Everywhere you look this way. And everywhere you look this way. And you look this way. And this way. He said, hey, guess what? I'm going to give it to you and my people. And God has done that uh, over and over again. And God has done it even today in the land of Israel. We see that so many times. But what am I saying? That, that passage says a lot. It says one thing. You're not going to sin and joy. And if you're here tonight and if you're a truly a child of God, we're, we're, we're basically a family here tonight. If you're a child, true, child, a true child of God tonight, you are not going to sin and enjoy. I mean, God's not joy. You ever, you've been in a place where you've done something and you know it was wrong, and boy, the Lord just ain't going to let you. This ain't going to let you enjoy it, man. You know what? Uh, some of you, some of you young people, you know, you, you, your mom says, uh, uh, you know, you're getting ready to eat supper, and she says, don't, don't get in that cookie jar now. Get him. He's back there asleep, probably. Uh, don't get in that cookie jar. You know, when I went to my grandma Willis's up on the farm, she had a big old glass, and she made the best tea cakes. Man, when I came to the farm, man, that thing was full when we got there. That was just the way it was. And, and you know what? The thing about my grandmother, she didn't care if I ate those before supper or not. Now, if I was on that, probably wouldn't happen. But man, I, I'd go there and I'd unload that jar, and I didn't have to look around, see if anybody looked. I'd grab a handful of things, man, I'd head outside. I'd eat it. And then I'd come back in. It didn't matter. And sometimes, you know, God tells us, you don't do certain things. Hey, something else. I turn over a couple of pages to Hebrews chapter 12. Let's start going with verse number 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3. For consider him. Why don't you do that tonight? If you're here tonight and you're not saved by the grace of God, consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest you be weird and faint in your minds. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as dear children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he, whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God deal with you as son. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? And if ye be without chastisement, whereof we are all partakers, then ye are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. And I'll say a little bit about that this morning. Thank God for old-fashioned dads and moms that, that knew what the old-fashioned Bible discipline was. And we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they barely for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joy. I mean, really, when, when, when was the last time when you got a spanking that you was, oh, isn't this so much fun? 
I was fascinating for him. Uh, you, know, you know exactly. Oh, yeah, well, oh, man, I'm so excited. I, I need an only, man. My dad's boy, here he comes. Here he comes the belt. Woo, this is going to be fun. I never had that kind of attitude. I said, oh, 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 man. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have done that. And, and you know, we, 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 we take that attitude. Hey, did you get, get the gist of what he's saying? No chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Oh, we don't like that. Nevertheless, Afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You know what he's saying is, you know, that's not a fun thing. When God has to chasten us, and he, 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 he gives off, oh, it's not fun, folks, but I'm going to tell you afterward, there's righteousness. Right. There's peace. I've used an example many years ago. We had a guy that worked with DSS. He didn't, he didn't, belong, he didn't believe in spanking his kids. We had supper with him now. One of my boys wasn't kidding. One of my other ones was cutting a cliff. And I took him back and I, was, and I, I didn't spank him out hard. I didn't think I did. I, it probably sounded like I was killing him. And I, I went back and sat at the table. Old Will came back. About two minutes later, he came up to me and said, Daddy, I sure do love you. I said, I love you too, buddy. Go, go ahead and play now and have a good night. And I'm sure that man thought, something ain't right here. I just, I just, I just spanked him. I disciplined. It sounded like I was killing him in the back, which I wasn't. But then, then he, the child come up and he said, "Daddy, I sure do love." And there was peace. There was a peaceable fruit of right. That is an example. And I've thought about that so many times. That's exactly what that verse is saying. When God spanks us, oh, that hurts! Oh, that hurts! Well, please don't do it. But you know, afterwards, the Lord, thank you for that. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for spanking me. But I needed that. Now, a lot of times we say, "Well, wait a minute, Lord, what me? It was my brother." Any of you brothers and sisters ever do that? See, CJ never does wrong. I know it was always his sisters, amen? Uh, you sisters probably say, hey, CJ, hey, you know, I know how families work. I had three sisters. I had a brother. Uh, who, who, who broke that? Oh, it wasn't me. It was him, my brother. It was one of my sisters. You know, three sisters. It had to be one of them. Could have been me. And we, we like to point. We like to blame. No, it's not Joyce. But see, I guarantee you, when Elimelech pulled out of, out of Bethlehem and he started down that road, he said, oh, look at there. Look at all the crops here. Man, this is like a good place to plant our family. And the next thing you know, Elimelech's dead. The next thing you know, the two boys are there. Now they're now they got to be the man of the house. Now they got to take care of the mom. And but the next thing you know, they're dead. And then Naomi said, "Hey, you know what? I'm getting out of here because I might be next." You ever thought about that? I thought Naomi. She might have thought, I'm, "I'm getting ready to be next here." You know what? In these verses here, as a matter of fact, drop down there to verse number fourteen. Or excuse me, verse 13. The Bible says, And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, or let it be rather healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fall in the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be divided. You know what? When we embrace anger, that does not glorify God. You, you, got, you know what? I've said it many times. When God chastens us, either it makes us bitter or it makes you better. Be better. Amen? Don't be bitter. I know people that something happens in their life instead of, instead of saying, you know, Lord, I, I deserve that. You know what they do? They get mad. They get bitter at God. The next thing you know, they're angry at the world. They're angry at you. Maybe a, maybe a family member, maybe a neighbor down the road. And you wonder, man, what, what's wrong with them? You know what it is? They got bitterness. And the Bible says, when they, you get bitterness, bitterness is like a cancer. Don't know that bitterness uh, swell up in you like some kind of disease. Any root, the word there talks about a root. Using, that word there talks about abrasive. Thereby many shall be defiled. Now, if you will, go back to the book of Ruth. Let me close. What I want to deal with tonight, because this woman makes a statement there that is just unbelievable to me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again. Into why then call you me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty, the Providing One, hath afflicted me. You know what? Maybe you're here tonight, and maybe you're not everything you ought to be for the Lord Jesus Christ, but you know what, maybe a week or two ago, maybe maybe you were close, you know what, you need to ask the Lord tonight, Lord, bring me back to a place. Oh, Lord, I want to get back to that place. Man, I tell you what, Brother Bill, I thought many, many times, man, I, 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 I enjoyed working at, at camp. Man, I'm going to tell you, that, that was a revival uh, atmosphere 12 weeks out of here. Man, that was a blessing. Uh, I don't get to experience that much anymore. 
Man, to get in here uh, four, five, or six, seven, I mean, Bible based messages a week, good singing, and every invitation, young people coming forward by the scores, getting saved, making decisions. And I heard a guy saying, Oh, well, you know, I, don't, I don't know about youth camp. I, I don't know about all them decisions. Well, I do. That's when them and God. That's not, don't worry about it. That's when them and God. What, what are you doing? And he, he was kind of putting down youth camp. And I was hearing about us taking our, our kids to camp and yeah, that's the decisions that were made. I said, well, I don't know. We you know, we went in July and we got some young people in our church as far as I'm concerned. They're, they're, they're still rejoicing on what God did for them in camp. So I'm just, I'm just basing on what I see. What, what's going on with them? I said, you, you know, yeah, it's one week out of the year. And I'm convinced tonight that one reason why I'm standing right here, right here, is because I had a pastor that said, you know what, we're going to camp this week. Amen. And you parents, make sure you get them there. And if you can't get them there, we'll pay for it. We'll get out there and they can cut grass. They can wash windows. They can come to church. They can clean commodes. They can do anything around the church. They want to. We're going to have them at camp. And if they don't come to camp, I'm going to personally drive the church bus by their house and pick them up on the way to Tennessee. That, that was kind of me. He, you know, Brother Bruce Smith. Uh, you know, probably take who I'm talking about. And that was kind of me. He, thank God for that. He said, we're going to camp. And I don't care what you're going. We're going to camp. We're just going to camp. Thank God for that. Amen. Uh, Brother Joy, did you, you always want, not want to go? That was probably two or three years. Uh, I thought, well, hey, I had a summer job. I was going to make some money. And I thought, you know, if I, man, you know, it didn't matter. You know, the Lord said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Hey, when I worked there in college, uh, I didn't make a whole lot. Matter of fact, I, I, I didn't make hardly anything, to be honest with you. It, it was, it was, it was. I won't say the word pitiful. It was, it was, it was rough. But you know what? God, God paid me back. Amen. You know how God paid me back? To take a Bible and lead a soul to Christ. Amen. To witness a people. Bring, bring kids out of my door after lots. I say, hey, I know she's been having some struggle. And you, if you pick them out, by, it's so easy. Kid come in. And, you know, he said, man, what's wrong? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Really, I mean, you need to talk after lots. You know, I never had, I never had anyone tell me no. Just take them outside and you start talking to them. And boy, you just see the Holy Spirit of God just wrap around and just put them. Some of you can see them in a vice all the way. The guy would preach, and the old Lord, Holy Spirit would just turn the vice. Amen. It was in the vice. They didn't even know it. They didn't even know they were in the vice, an error of service. The Word of God would go forth, and the Holy Spirit would just turn that old vice. And pretty soon they'd holler, Uncle. That's it. No more. I've had enough. I'm going to surrender. And sometimes it took them a Friday night. I mean, sometimes it might have took them. I heard of kids waiting until they get back on the bus, on the, on the trip home before they say, hey, I'm Lord, I, I surrender off. You know what? That's the way these folks were. What if, what if this family would have said, look, I know we got a family here, but we're going to say right here. We're going to say right here and trust God. Maybe Elimelech still would have died. I don't know. Maybe two sons still would have died in the sun. I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell me. You know, there's sort of questions. And I just want to ask the Lord when I get to glory one day. I said, what about that man? We, 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 we have, I said, you ever wonder about, am I just the only person that ever thinks that? That's the way I think. When I, when I study, I think, what if he had stayed? You know what? I believe if he had stayed, God would have met his needs. If he had trusted God. Our problem is we don't want to trust God. Well, I tell you what, I, I'll try. I got plenty now. Lord, I'm praying you to do this. And Lord, but, but in the back of my mind, I said, nah, I know the Lord can do it, but you know, if the Lord does, does it, I gotta have plan B. You know, I gotta have plan C. You know what? I can honestly say, over the last couple of months, God has wrought some things even in our lives that has just been phenomenal. I've had, I've prayed about some things, and the Lord has 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 taken care of some situations, and I'm not going into detail about that tonight, but it's almost like you just felt like the hands of hell was on your back, and I said, Lord, get them off, back them off, send them the other way. And God did. It was almost like, wow, where's them hands at? Yeah. Wait a minute, I prayed. I asked the Lord to I asked the Lord to, to send them away, and it's almost like he did it. Amen. But yeah, my 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 flesh said, well, you know, we you know we pray well, we're praying and do it anyway. So, you know, I, I'll pray, I'll tell the people I pray about it, but really in my heart, you're saying, No, look, y'all look at me like y'all know the same one time. Y'all done the same thing. And you pray and you say, Well, how oh, I can't do this, it's ain't gonna work. And God, God, God has answered those prayers. I remember, I remember it was two or three nights, I couldn't sleep off. So it was just things I was turning, and I mean it was awful. And I said, Lord, you, you gotta do something, you gotta change this. And then one night I remember. I slept like a baby about four or five nights in a row. And then it dawned on me, whoa, what's going on here? I, I've, had, I've had three or four good nights of sleep. And where are those hounds at? And it's like the Lord said, I'll take care of them. Just trust me. Just trust me. Hey, Elimelech didn't trust God. 
He left the country, he took his, and by the way, he didn't just, he didn't do it. He took his family with him. He took his wife, his kids. And they went to this foreign country and God had to take them out full. Oh, we'll just be there. We'll just, we'll just go there for one planting season. We'll get some food and, and then we'll come back. And ten years later, ten years later, Naomi comes back with this daughter-in-law and says, I'm coming back. God, God has dealt with my heart. God has brought me out full. I came out with a full family now. Now I brought me home again empty. Obviously, she had, she had Ruth with her. Folks, I'm going to tell you, ask God tonight, bring you back to a place of cleansing, a place of power, a place where God can use you up. Let me tell you something. God is doing something here today, so He really is. You know, it's just amazing. I, I, I won't go into a lot of detail, but you know, it's amazing how I see things. Maybe you don't see it. I do. The Lord shows me. And it's like the Lord is working in some of y'all, your, your heart and your lives, and some of you, I don't think you realize it. I see it. I see God doing, changing you. And that's a blessing. That is encouragement to me as a pastor. If I, if I didn't see change, you know what I want to do? Let's, 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 let's put a lot and go home. Ain't nothing going on here. Hey, you know what? I, I talk, sometimes I talk to other preachers and they are like, that's what's going on there, ministry. Woe is me. Woe is me. I, I think, what was you? Man, what's wrong with you? He said, bro, joy, it ain't always be that way. Let me tell you something. For the last couple of eight or ten years, God has had, had me and Diana almost, I almost felt like we've been in a holding pattern. I've been wanting to land out of down or bring those Spartanburg airport in a jet or a, air, a commercial airplane, and he's had me on a holding pattern. I've been, I've been trying to be faithful. I've been, I've been faithful in other places. I've been doing a lot of, but I've almost like I've been in a holding pattern. I said, Lord, that, that, this is the desire of my heart. And then when the Lord started to say, okay, I got your runway down there. It's Gospel Baptist Church. I said, oh, Lord, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, let's, let's fly around a few more times. We've got to think about this, Lord. Wait a minute. The Lord said, wait a minute. I, I, I've, had, I've had you in this holding pattern, and I've been preparing you, and now I need you to go down and land on Gospel Baptist Church. And I said, Lord, wait a minute. We, we need to talk. We need to pray a little more. And, I, and all of a sudden, I started realizing, oh, Lord, what, what's going on? And I started realizing. And we started getting lower. We come out of the cloud, so to speak, and I'm circling the airport, and I see Gospel Baptist Church there, and we go out and talk with the men, and the men are saying, are you, are you really sure this is what you want? I said, you know, I believe it is. I believe it is, but uh, let, let's pray. Let's pray a few more weeks, and let's, let's really make sure about this. And all this while, my heart was just, I can't explain to you. But I remember the night, I don't know if it was a Thursday night. Man, we just had, a, we had a, some kind of service here. And on the way home, me and my wife were talking, and I said, you know what? I don't know what God's doing, but I said, you know what, God calls me out here. I said, yeah, we're, we're going to do that. We're going there. Because you know what, that's, that's a mission field. My wife kept saying, that's a mission field. I kept saying, this is a mission field. And it is. Uh, you know, a lot of churches here in Greenville, but I'll tell you what, a lot of them, they don't know what this book is anymore. Oh, they want to entertain you. They want to have music up here with 14 sets of drums and steel guitars and amplifiers bigger in that pulpit. We don't need that. Hey, I'll find that in the Word of God. I tell you what, that, way, that kind of that kind of stuff will drive you from the Lord. You just stay close to this book. I'm gonna tell you what, I had an old fashioned pastor, and I said many, many times. He didn't do that. He didn't he didn't that kind of stuff. I mean, he didn't put up with that. You know what you know what he put up with? He put up with that right there. Week in, week out. Preach, preach, preach. Did you ever get tired? Well, sometimes it's a little bit. Brother Brother Jim know what I'm talking about. Brother Bruce, man, I'll tell you what. We have a new section right here, the first three or four rows. If you were a dog, you didn't sit on them first four rows. That was 10 inch sections. You had a dog come in. If a visitor come here and he's a dog, excuse me, but this seat's taken. You gotta sit one. That was our section. I mean, Tiki sat up front of him. They didn't sit back on the back row, man. You had, you had a few back there, you know. A few sat back on the back, being Mr. Cool and thinking everything was But man, that was a team section. I love that. And folks, I'm telling you, a limelight, if he'd have just stayed and trusted God. Would God have spared his life and gave him many more years to live? I don't know. The Bible doesn't to tell us. But you know what? He went to sojourn. The Bible says he continued there a little while. And then 10 years later, they're still there. And what's left of his family. Now the family is basically a part. And she comes back. And we, and we, if you know anything about the book of Ruth, Boaz being a beautiful picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, he comes and he redeems her. And he marries her. And who is in the line of Christ? Anybody know? It's amazing. What a beautiful. Here's a woman that was in another country and somehow, just by coincidence, as a liberal would say, she, she, she married in that family. 
Hey, I've said it many times to you young people, when you get married, you don't just marry a young lady or a young man, you marry a family, and you better be content with that because some families, uh, you don't want to be around them. You really don't. Uh, I know that's hard. That's saying hard words, but it's true. Hey, that, that's, your, that's your wife. That's your family. That, that's your husband. Hey, the awesome power of choice. Elimelech could have said, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to stay here. Come famine or not, I'm going to do what's right. He said, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to run. I'm going to run over here. I'm going to take my wife. I'm going to take my family. And look what it cost him. It cost him everything. Yes, God blessed Naomi with Ruth. God blessed me. We, we know that story. How did she come back? And Boaz, Boaz said, basically said, hey guys, uh, don't glean. Just just leave the full crop there and let her come through. I'm sure she, she comes with a wild man. What do you mean? I showed up a lot of food. Ooh, look, now look, look at all this food I got today. Oh, now I said, oh. Mm -hmm. now, I know what Boaz is thinking. He's noticed you. He has seen you. That's God's blessing on his life. My fo folks tonight, look, if, if Elimelech would have trusted God, we probably wouldn't even be having this message. Now, I've often wondered what, what would have happened. But you know what? He didn't trust God. He didn't walk by faith. He walked by sight. And that's what we are. Oh, thou Emily, thou naughty one. But hey, can you do that with me? Pastor Will, sometimes I'll do that. God wants me to stand by faith and trust Him. And I say, oh, yes, I'm going to trust Him. I'm the pastor. You know what? Sometimes that's hard for me to do. If you knew my heart, if you knew my wife, she'd she tell you there's times where I'm thinking, Lord, why are you doing this? But you know what? I've learned something. Trust Him. Just trust Him. Hey, let, let the Lord take care of the front. A lot of times things come along and I just let, I pray about something. I said, and the Lord says, let me, let me take, let, just let me take care. You may never do that. Yeah. I'm not smart for that too, right? Just let me handle it. You know, the water's leaking or something. Just, just let me handle it. Of course, sometimes when we, we men handle then we have to go, she has to go call a plumber or somebody else and we, you know, we turn up and break the uh, water flow. But you know, that's what the Lord says, folks. The Lord says, let me handle it. Just let the Lord handle it. You know what? He can do it so much better than I can. And you know what? When he handles it, guess what? He lets you sleep at night. You don't even roll over at night. It's two or three nights I didn't even roll over. And I remember thinking, wow, this is, this is, something's going on here. And I don't know yes, Lord. And I remember the night it happened. I got up about four o'clock in the morning. I just went to the living room. And I knelt on my knees by the couch. And I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you for giving me that calmness of spirit. But it's driving me crazy. It was driving me crazy. And I think, I can't sleep. I'm, having, I'm worried about these situations. And I said, no, Lord. But only all to. Let's all stand tonight. Every head of we are closed tonight. The awesome power of choice. Can I ask you a question? Are you, are you like a lemon leg? Let me ask this question first. Maybe you're here tonight, and you're not even a Christian. I mean, if you die within the next five minutes, do you even have the assurance of heaven? You know, when we die, the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Hey, the Bible says the rich man had lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Jesus preached on hell. Well, all morning, you don't have in the Word of God. He really did. Maybe you're here tonight, and you say, you know, I'm not really sure I'm even saved. Hey, you know what? You need to find yourself in an old-fashioned altar and say, Lord, save me. I recognize I'm a sinner and I can't save myself. And dear Jesus, save me. I know you came to the cross. You shed your blood. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I've been saved many, many years. But you know what? I, I'm, sometimes I'm like a limb leg. I don't trust God like I want to. Hey, I'm that way. I said, I don't have trust you more. This message is tonight is for me because this past two or three weeks, God is teaching me, hey, just trust me. Trust me. And I will take care of it. And you know what? He has. And he always has. He always will. But our problem is we like to get in the way. We get in the way. We get out of the war. Especially us men. We are bad about it. We can going to solve this problem ourselves, huh? Hey, I'm going to say, Lord, get me out of the way. Get me out of the way of this church and you, you take over. You do what needs to be done. Hey, Elimelech dies. His two sons die in a far country. They have to come back to the place of Bethlehem, Judah, a land of bread, or a house of bread. Back to the place of blessing. Oh, don't leave the place of blessing in our dear Christian. Stay right there. I don't care how hard it gets, how wet it gets, how cold it gets. You, you plant your feet right there and say, Lord, Give me the courage to back by. Give me the strength to just do what's right. You know what? You do that. God bless you. God bless you. The song says, I only trust him. Oh, that's so true. I only trust him. Just put your trust in him. It's so easy to trust in finances. It's so easy to trust.
trust in our mental capability, in our strength, whatever we need to trust in life, it's not going to matter. It's not going to work. It's not good enough. It's not strong enough. There's not enough of it to trust Him. Just trust Him. Trust Him. 